Hello everyone. My name is Anita Human, and um, today I'll be speaking on the topic quality documentation, the key to open source code. Okay. A little bit about me. I am of course Anita Human, a developer advocate at Kivano, policy engine for Kubernetes. I'm a front-end developer and a technical writer. I'm an open source advocate and have been a fan of open source since my career started. And uh, I'm also a mesh mate, otherwise known as a mentor at layer five community. All right, so that's now that we know a bit about me, let's get into the business of today. What exactly are we going to be looking at during this section? First, we're going to be talking about an introduction to open source software and um, why documentation is imperative in open source software, the strategies for quality documentation, how to achieve an effective documentation, what makes documentation ineffective in a project, and um, quality documentation checklists that you should look out for. All right, looks like a long list, but let's get to it. First and foremost, let's look at what open source software is. Um, well, open source software is simply code that is designed to be publicly accessible to everyone. And this means anyone can actually see this code, anyone can modify this code, anyone can distribute it as a fit. And well, as the definition sounds, it's um, code that is made available for collaboration, right? And then uh, there's a frequent misconception that goes on when people hear that open source software is, of course, code that is free to the public. And that is, if it's free, why do I have to cu carefully curate this, this code or the documentation behind it or anything concerning this code? It's not like anyone actually cares about it since it's free, right? But then that is a very, very totally wrong ideology. And we're going to look at some of the reasons why during this section. But then let's look at why exactly documentation is um, imperative in open source. In open source software, documentation is considered as the core onboarding tool when people um, join a community for the first time or when people are interested in a particular project. Now, this is because people use documentation of the project to um, enable them to get familiar with the project code base, to get familiar with the project community, the community behind a particular project, and of course, the workflow in the project or the community itself. And that this is to show you how a lot of persons rely on the documentation of a project to get a wider knowledge or understanding of a particular project. So why exactly should we care about um, open source documentation? Um, a quote by Jennifer Regan says, documentation helps users to succeed with your software, and this is completely true. It empowers them to be self-sufficient, enables them to give further feedback on a particular project, and also, it is the organizational backbone for your project. Now, you can see how in-depth that explanation sounds. It shows you that without documentation, what exactly is a great project? That's a big question we're going to discuss in this section. Let's look at a quick survey from GitHub back in 2007. And as you can see, this. This, um, this survey shows that um, documentation is the number one problem is that users of an open source software frequently have issues with either it is inconfusing or um, not, it is either it is incomplete or not com um, or confusing, completely confusing to the users at all. And you actually wonder if the code is meant for the entire public, how come it's not carefully um, look, the documentation is not carefully looked after and curated. Well, like you said earlier, lots of persons say, if it's free, why do I have to make so much effort towards it? 
either by contributing to the code base or the documentation. And that is completely wrong. And we're going to look further into how that is. So why should we care about this documentation in open source exactly? First and foremost, this is code that is made available to the general public. And so we're expecting contributors from the East, West, North, and South. And so there's a diversity of, um, there's a diversity in the user personnel that come into that particular project, just to get a better knowledge. And this could be either the users the end users, this could be the sponsors of that particular project. This could also be the designers who want to contribute to this project. This could also be the developers who want to use this project for to help themselves in one way or another. And so when you think about this, you're like, okay, so not just one person that's walking through the walls of this community to know more about our project. They're like thousands of persons from thousand um, fields coming to look at our project. So this it's another reason why you should actually look out for documentation. And also, where are users coming from? Of course, these users could be coming from um, a white, um, a click link from another article, or they could have just stumbled upon your projects on their search engines, or even on your social media platforms by a tweet made by someone, and they're curious about your projects, and only to come into your project and find out that it's not as awesome as the person who made, who wrote about it, or who tweeted about it made it look simply because the documentation is not carefully looked out for. And also we, we should care about the documentation because we want to satisfy the user's need. Like I said, you wouldn't want the person who, um, who heard about your project from someone else and is already enthusiastic about the project, walking into that um, the project documentation and being disappointed that, oh, well, um, I thought this was a project I could help myself with, but this project will solve my problems, but then the documentation says otherwise. And that is a very, very bad picture for your project. And this is another reason why you should also care, for, um, care about the documentation of your project. And another reason is effectively translating information. Yes, the code base might be as detailed as the code base of that particular project might solve a universal problem, but if you do not translate that code base into something readable for your audience, then how about user personnel that are not familiar with the code base and do not have the privilege of actually reading through the code base to understand or looking through the code base to understand what is written down there? Not a lot of persons can do this, of course. So to effectively translate information, we have to actually look out for the documentation of each and every open source project. Now let's look at the strategies for quality documentation. And when we talk about um, quality documentation, we're talking about a documentation that is um, accessible to everyone, helps everyone understand a project in a very broader sense. In a way that if I go over your documentation for a project, I'll have enough knowledge to actually advocate this project to somebody to actually write about this project if I choose to, to use this project without looking for a helping hand or an extra guide. And all of these are like things that a quality documentation should have. Well, let's look at the strategies for this. To begin with, you have to first understand your user personnel. Like I said earlier, there's a diverse spectrum of persons that walk into an open source community or project every single day, project on GitHub repositories and um, every single day just to see or to um, look for project use cases to solve their problems or their needs in one way or the other. We have the engineers and the engineers work into a project because they probably are working on another project and that's on your project is a tool to complete what they're working on. And so the engineers would definitely jump into a project. And for an engineer, he can actually look for the document, um, the project code base and have a, an in-depth knowledge about it, right? Because yes, he's familiar with the code base. And then let's talk about the designers. Will you also advise the designers to go and read through the code base? I know I've had several friends who are designers complain of this singular fact that like, they want to contribute to this project but then the documentation for this project does not look like the ones 
um, design contributors because it doesn't provide make provision for that. And that is a big problem for most persons. And then another user person that we should look at is the technical writers. Of course, there are several persons who would want to like write about a project, the use cases and the problem is solved, maybe in an article where they're listing out other projects and uh, they've probably came across yours, they want to include it right there. And in this situation, what happens if the technical writer, of course, cannot reach the code base of the project and um, cannot, of course, translate it in the best way? So how do they actually give this information in their write-ups that they're putting together? Another uh, person that you should look at is the sponsors. Yes, you um, in open source, frequently most persons come to a project not because they want to use it, but because they see that yes, this project solves a particular problem. This project is useful to this particular ecosystem, or this project solves this um, problem. And as such, I should um, contribute to this project financially. And so, but before I do that, I want to be sure that what I think of this project is what is, it's what my my financial support or is worth my financial effort. And that is where you expect your um, the user personnel, the sponsors to also look through your documentation. I imagine I work into your documentation as a sponsor and I'm rather disappointed and impressed by what you told me about the project or what I heard about the project. And also another user personnel you should look out for is the end users. Yes, of course, your end users. These persons are the people who utilize your projects either in production or either in production or in, um, in its um, beginning stage. So these are the persons that you should also create a curated documentation for because your end users will not be able to like have an in-depth understanding of this project if the documentation is not as detailed as it should be. And finally, the contributors. And if your project is an open source project, you should look out for your contributors big time because people are eager to contribute to open source projects. And that is something not a lot of persons know about. I've come across thousands of persons like since I started um, contributing to open source and every single one of them is eager to contribute to open source because they feel like, yeah, there's so much exciting things happening when you like collaborate with different persons from different parts of the world on a singular project. So a lot of persons are eager to contribute. But then the big, the big discouragement for them is the documentation or how detailed or how self-explanatory that project has made itself. And when user and um, contributors look at this and they're like, well, this is my first time contributing to open source. Let me look at the documentation to see, or let me look at the write up for this particular um, project to see if I can develop interest or contribute to it. Look into the documentation. It is not as detailed as it should be. It doesn't provide guidelines on how to contribute. It doesn't actually have any accommodations for contributors on how they can ask for help, how they can get to the code base, how they can get um, the documentation um, of that particular project on the repositories and all of that. It's very, very discouraging for anyone to um, have further interest in this project. And the next thing, another strategy is um, understand what this person has, this user person has want from your project. Now, of course, every single person is coming to your project for diverse reasons. Like we mentioned earlier, the engineers might not spend like so much time reading through the documentation because they're already familiar with working with code. And um, so if the documentation is just as brief as possible, the documentation, um, an engineer will be more than happy to actually just glance through it, look for the points they are looking out for and immediately start implementing it for what uses, for what purposes they need this project for. And then the designers. The designer might want to enhance the project's um, UI or UX, but then imagine a scenario where the designer has to like read more than just the um, documentation that's provided, which is barely 
enough to actually give um, a broad and uh, in-depth details on this particular project. Now, this actually hinders the designer's motive, right? Of course. And then we're looking at the technical writers. The technical writers on the end definitely want to go in depth reading about this project, reading on the left and right of, of this project, just to make sure that they get all the information that is about this project to put together in their articles. And so they might be spending quality time on your project documentation or more time than the engineers would. And then the sponsors, of course. A sponsor is probably looking for a place to you know, um, support financially and as a sponsor, I walk into a project um, documentation just to see if this project is worth my financial support. Now, you see that, yes, the project solves a need, but then the, pro um, the documentation process should document the steps on how this project came to be, how the entire team worked towards achieving this goal, how the future plans are, how sustainable this project is, because I wouldn't want to contribute to financially to a project that does not have any plans for sustainability in the nearest future. And so you should also look out for this. And then we're talking about the end users. Now, what do the end users want? Well, basically just to use your project. So they might not be spending as much time as it, although the end users might not be, might not have a broad knowledge on, um, on the software as much as engineers would, but then they most likely wouldn't be spending so much time on your project, you may just spend uh, 30 minutes or thereabouts glancing through it just to look for the particular um, tool they're looking for or the particular um, lines to set up on the end, set up the project on the end, and that's just about it. And they will probably not spend as much time as um, technical writers would on the project. And then finally, the contributors. Now, the contributors, on the other hand, are persons who spend like tons of time on the project because they're new to this software, they're new to the language, probably the program language used to develop this software, they're new to the concept of open source, or they're new to like the entire idea of um, softwares, open source softwares and uh, contributing to it at all. And so you might see that the contributors spend quality time on this project. And when you think about this, you're going to realize that yes, all of this person spent like different times on this project looking for different needs to be fixed. And so how does this documentation solve the needs of each and every one of this problem? That is where documentation becomes really, really important. So now let's see how to achieve an effective documentation for an open source project. First things first, what you should be looking out for is to define your project vision. Now, it is actually very, very okay to go straight up, write the documentation, what the project serves and all of that. But then without defining the vision of that particular project in the documentation or by defining it in the readme of that particular project or the repository rather, why should users engage with this project? Because of course, they will definitely want to see what picture, the broader picture that you thought about before putting this um, software together. Because you must have thought of an idea or a problem you want to fix, a bigger problem you don't want to fix. That is why you went about to produce or to put together this software. Now, how do you make your users see the same picture that you see for this project? And that's where the vision comes in. You have to define the project vision um, as detailed as possible and put it together. And another thing you should look out for, you should define the documentation goals. Now, what exactly is the documentation meant to solve and the target? Like I looked at earlier, you should consider the user persona. So what goal is it going to solve? Is documentation just, you know, a dummy, um, um, a dummy site where people can just, um, go through without getting any tangible information or documentation is basically the um, code base written in words to make it easier for persons to understand or a code base digested in the most simple ways for anyone to get a better understanding of your project and these are things you need to define out 
before you get started. And once you define the, the goals and the targets of your documentation, next thing is to execute these plans. Now, how do you execute these plans? You might set a particular timeline that yes, within a period of six months, I should have completed the documentation to this end, to this extent, so that anyone jumping onto my project or anyone who comes across this project gets like enough information or enough details to satisfy them about this project that I've created. And so you should follow a timeline for yourself that you have created, of course, and you could do this. There's no better way to do this than with the community behind you. And um, also another thing you should look out for is automate and track the project versioning. Now, for most projects, as um, the code base is released, the documentation just stays there waiting for the day that someone is going to automatically walk in and say, yeah, the code base and the documentation do not correlate. So I'd like to contribute to this. And that is very, very bad for a project documentation. So every release history should be probably documented just as much as the code base is probably documented because there should be a, a form of um, um, synchronism before between your code and the documentation of course because the code base documentation is a representation of your code base in words and then another strategy we're going to look at is um starting with the readme and what is now what is an open source project without a properly documented readme now um, through my time contributing to projects, I know that I usually get hyped about the project whenever I look through the README or the um, contributing guidelines and like they define the project as much as I wanted to. They tell me why this project was created, how it was created, who created it, what problems it solved. And yes, of course, README might just be like a summary of the project. But you should make it as interactive and as detailed as possible because some persons might like stumble upon your repository before they come across the documentation. And so in this situation, the README will be a substitute for that. And also, you should make the documentation easy for all user personnel to understand. Like we talked about earlier, you have to understand what each user personnel is looking for. And if it means doing a survey on this particular project, then go out, go right on ahead with it because it's better to like give um, take the most times curating carefully curating the documentation than just um, doing a rough sketch of what you feel the the users would need or what you feel would solve the users problems and then leaving it halfway only to realize that it is not even as good as it should be. Also, documentation should be as direct yet detailed as possible. Yes, if the readme is going to be as concise and detailed as possible, the documentation should do exactly the same thing. And that is why you need to take in as much time and effort as possible curating this documentation. And like I said, if it means doing a survey on your users and what they're expecting and um, the areas you should be focusing on why creating the documentation, then go right on ahead and put in all that effort just to make sure you get the best or get the most while documenting your project. And then we should also, documentation should prioritize sustainability. Of course, there should be a plan and a community behind your documentation to execute this plan. Yeah, now in this situation, you're going to, I'm going to say, what happens after six months after this project has launched and like the documentation just stays like it's six months behind because there's nobody actually aware that um, the documentation is lagging behind and should be improved. And so what happens five years after this, um, this project is created? What happens to the documentation after then? These questions matter a lot because I, I know I have come across series of projects that the documentation does not tally with the, the project code base. And you might use a line of code from the documentation 
only to get an error that this particular code is deprecated and you you wonder or you puzzled why exactly the project should have documentation out here if they're not going to make effort to improve on the documentation to make it up to date with the code base. And this is a this, um, discouraging factor for most contributors because I wouldn't want to like um, implement or add a line of code from the project only for it to mess up my own code that I've been working on for probably an entire month or an entire week or entire year, only for your your project to mess up my own um, my line of code. So that alone is enough to discourage persons to um, utilize your project, contribute to your project, or even sponsor your project. And um, another strategy we should look out for is to frequently include community focused documentation. A lot of communities have come across several open source projects and this is always an issue. Now, yes, we're curating the documentation to make it as detailed and concise as possible. But then what is so much words in the documentation if it does not include the community? Because this is open source we're talking about, and there's definitely lots of collaboration going on. And like we talked about, the user personas are as diverse as the community. And so, what is a documentation if it doesn't include the community as well? First, you should look out for um, the inclusively documenting this project. Yes, what if the users are like first timers to open source or first timers to your project? What if they're um, experts in the project? You should also look out for this. So what if they're not experts or they're not first timers and they're just average users who want to you know, get a, an in-depth knowledge of your project? And this also counts as well. And another thing you should look out for is encourage documentation contributions. Yes, frequently I want to look through this almost like, I intentionally look for this in most softwares documentation of most software is because like so many persons want to contribute to open source, but they're discouraged by the fact that there's a myth that says open source contribution is mostly just code. And which is very, very wrong because there's several um, planning and thoughts that go towards creating this open source project. It goes through design and it goes through like um, documenting it, which is done by the technical writers. And like several others, several other planning put together to you know create this open source project. And so, if you don't encourage um, documentation contributions by saying, yeah, if you want to contribute to our project, follow these steps or look through this guide to contribute to the documentation, not every user will like just have the the thoughts that yes, I'm automatically supposed to contribute to this project documentation. Of course, you need to welcome them or give them a heads up that yes, you can actually contribute to improving this documentation. And even if they come across an issue on your documentation, it will be difficult for them to report this issue since the documentation does not clearly state that they can actually go ahead and contribute to this project. I'm not sure you should include support links. Um, um, the last open source project that I looked through, this was a big problem because personally I wanted help from someone in the community. And looking through the code base, I wasn't able to like find someone or a maintainer for that particular project. And deep down, I thought maybe if I had a link to the community or if I had a link to someone who I can reach out to directly, that is responsible for this project code base that can help me out. This was all my problems, but I didn't see it, unfortunately. And I was puzzled for a moment and I realized that not a lot of persons actually think through on the support links, but this is a very, very important thing to include when creating your open source documentation. And also add the call to participate. You don't want to, you don't want to make it look like you don't need contributions in your project or you don't need help in your project. And of course, even if you don't need help, it is an open source project. So contributors most likely be eager to contribute to your project. And how else can they contribute if they don't see a community behind this project? So there should always be a call to participate 
in the open source community behind this project because if there's going to be collaboration, there should be a place that the community can engage in outside the repositories. And another thing to finally look at is um, to look at is to leverage other techniques aside text related content all the time. This is a big problem for most open source projects trying to document their code base. They focus so much on words, text, grammar, you know, making everything as complex as it shouldn't be. And you forget that your user freshness is diverse. You have different users. You have a diverse range of persons, you know, collaborating on this project. So what if the persons that you're, you're that are looking to this project are scared of so many words? I know I looked at an open source project recently, and well, what is what is the word you use to classify something that is is wordy, but not comprehensive well i don't know but yeah the project was it had a very long documentation like the documentation as long as it can be but it was discouraging for me to read because like there's so much words why are there so much words anyway and i was puzzled because personally i feel documentation can be anything your documentation could simply just be videos videos explaining what this project does, short um, demos on this particular project and all of that. And if I look through it, so long as it solves the need I am looking out for in that particular project, then I'll definitely count it as a detailed or a good documentation. But if there are like so many words that were yet not comprehensive enough, that doesn't really count, does it? So you should look for other um, techniques for documenting or curating content outside text related um, techniques. And this could be either visual documentation, like I mentioned earlier, you could practice using or explaining your projects better in uh, documentation, creating short documentation that explain each and every um, use case of your project and also you can have testimonials because people want to see what or who has used this project. And for most persons, they use a project because a friend of theirs that they trust used this project and has attested that this project is good. And so if you see um, users that have actually um, come to testify that, yeah, this project is awesome, I use this, either on the social media platform or anywhere that this text is written, you could um, quickly just take, um, a link to this and add it to your documentation just for referencing because persons can um, most persons use a project based on the trust they have for that particular project and that project and that trust can only come about if there are testimonials behind this project and another um, way you could actually curate your content without write so much text is um working samples yes for a project that needs that needs like hands-on demos, then you could uh, take um, a quick time or a short moment to actually um, create um, work, um, workshops and um, work labs, just to get people um, have a hands-on experience using your project, especially if people have to like set up this project on their own systems, then your documentation should include working samples on how they can actually set it up because if you focus more attention on the text written content, not a lot of persons might be able to like understand you as much as they should with just text. And also you should pra use um, practice labs. I know that um, for several projects, you might like have to um, do um, demonstrations using the, your terminal and all of that. And so if your project is those kind, it's a project that requires the terminal and all of that your project should your documentation should have provision for practice labs where users can actually um, exercise using this project before setting up on their system just so you know get clarity on your project and also the documentation should include the use cases what exactly are the different features that this project has and what do these features solve this is a 
um, this is a question almost every user looks out for on the documentation. I know that whether it's a contributor or a sponsor, engineer or a technical writer or designers, they all want to see the different use cases for this project and how it can be useful to them in one way or another. And in order to do this, your project documentation should clearly have um, its use cases written out either as features or as um, the different integrations for this particular project. And also, you should have um, clear, clearly documented metrics. What do I mean by clearly documented metrics? From the time this project was launched down to the, uh, the current time, how many users has it gained so far? How many, um, how many users from different countries has it um, gained? How many contributors from different um, parts of the world has it had? Or how many sponsors has it had so far? Most users want to look through this, particularly sponsors want to see details like this, metrics like this to be sure that, yeah, this project is actually, it looks like it has um, a growth potential and it's a sustainable one because from the time it launched down to this time, there has been a, a, an exponential growth, which means within a few months or a few years, the growth might be double what it is right now. And so that is why you need to create um, your documentation using mm -hmm, other techniques that are outside just writing a bunch of text that people most likely not read it because believe me, not a lot of persons read all of that text. <laughs> And then we have, um, you can develop your documentation like you're developing your code. You see the amount of effort that is put towards making sure a code functions smoothly, making sure that there is no bug in that particular code, all of the effort that is put into that particular code base, the same energy and the same effort should be used when documenting this project because it is like the code base is the documentation is a representation of your code base. And so if it's documentation does not give as much detail as code base does, well, I don't really see the need for the software being open for users or contributors at all. And so you should make your documentation make documentation a requirement for a merge or release milestone. I mentioned this earlier, your documentation should um, be in, um, in sync with the release of that particular project. And so if there is a, a version one of that particular project, the documentation should um, carefully document the version one of that project, the features that were implemented, what was changed, um, what they should expect in the next version and all of that. And this should like work hand in hand. The project and the documentation should be in, in correlation. And also you should have a well-documented process for contributing to documentation. I mentioned this earlier, but it's, it's one thing to invite contributors. Welcome, you can contribute to our documentation as well. But how? That's a big question. I know I can contribute to this documentation. How do I do it? Because not a lot of persons are, are conversant with contributing to open source, not to talk of contributing to the documentation. Because like, several persons feel um, contrib um, documentation contributions are not done on the repositories for most contributors. And so having a well-documented process for contributing will come in really handy for your users and even contributors to that particular project. And also um, put documentation and code in the same project. Well, this is not um, this is not a mandatory thing, but for most projects, for easy access for the users and the contributors, it is always is advised that the code base and the documentation for that code base should exist in one repository for easy access, and also to like be able to track the the um, progress of the documentation in accordance to the progress of the code base. And so it's better or advised that both the code base and the documentation of the project stay in one repository. Although, like I said, it is not a mandatory option. 
And uh, look, moving forward, let's look at what makes a project ineffective. Several reasons, there are like tons of reasons, but then I listed out a few here. Um, I've come across a series of open source projects and um, people will be like, why are you not hyped about this project as much as you should be? Well, it's simple. The project might solve like thousands of reasons globally, or it might be the lifesaver tomorrow. But if I come across this project and it doesn't solve the need that I'm looking for, perhaps I want to write about this project and documentation doesn't solve my need, I'll definitely not want to give the best reviews about this project. And that goes to every user or every contributor that is coming to your particular code base. And so what makes your project not as uh, your project documentation not as um, superb or as effective as it should be? First, is your project probably focus more on um, um, quantity over quality. Like I said, having so much words, too much text, so much write-ups, and like every single, um, every single page you swipe through on your documentation, there's like over 2,000 words on a particular page. Yes, of course, we understand that you can write down everything word to word, but then there should be other ways you can actually um, explain this project without having to write so much words or so much text because not a lot of persons spend their entire time reading through the text. And um, I recently carried out a survey using using um, um, Google Analytics on a project, and I realized that number the amount of read time for most persons is five minutes. Like the highest we would see for a user is five minutes. Most persons just uh, look through the documentation for two seconds, most persons just look through for three seconds or one minute or two minutes. And you, the highest you'll be looking at is 10 minutes or 20, um, 20 minutes. That is if the person is really, really looking for answers and um, has to search through. Else, five minutes is maximum for a lot of persons who want to like better understand your project. So if you, you see that if you focus so much time on writing a lot of text that do not actually um, pass down the information that is expected, that is also an effect, an ineffective documentation. And also focusing more on um, being repetitive while writing. Imagine the intro page of your project has, this project helps to decentralize the um, open source ecosystem. This project helps to bring people together. And only for me to move to the, um, about page or another page on that particular um, documentation to see the exact words and the exact terms that you use in explaining this project. Yes, um, that also doesn't count as effective documentation. And also we have incomprehensive documentation. Yes, your project might be as um, detailed as it should be, but then how um, explanatory are the words to the users? Remember, we have diverse spectrum of users coming to your project. And so what um, is it comprehensive enough for an expert as much as it, it would be for a beginner using your project? And these are the things that you should consider. And if it doesn't, then there is needs to improve on this documentation. And also we have documentation is done by developers alone. I'm not saying it's bad for documentation to be done by developers, but the way a developer would write the documentation is far different from the way a technical writer or someone who has experience on documenting content would. And of course, the developer will use mostly technical terms to explain everything. And so what happens to the technical writers who want to read more about your project? This also counts as ineffective documentation. And also when documentation is done post-development. Now, a lot of persons always feel or get the impression that documentation should be the last thing that should follow suit after the project is completed, which is completely wrong because while you're following through this, um, this particular pattern, you're likely to miss out on the major points that you did or the major um, features that you implemented in the code base and your documentation will end up not having these points which are also relevant to the users and so they um while creating a project from the beginning of that project 
down to the end. And then finally, when you launch the project, you should be documenting alongside. And also inconsistency across the documentation. Yes, this also counts as um, um, ineffective documentation um, steps or plans. And also no support link. We looked at that earlier. You don't want your users to um, always have to look for your email via LinkedIn since they saw that you're the person behind or you're the person behind that particular project. So they have to look for your email via LinkedIn or search your names on their search engines before they actually ask for help, right? So your, your documentation should, um, the documentation that does not have a support link is considered as ineffective as well. And also non-inclusive documentation. It is an open source project. Let's have in mind that it is an open source project. And so in open source, um, diversity and inclusion is a priority for every project and every community. And if your project is not as inclusive as it should be, if it doesn't look for, if it doesn't um, think about, if your project documentation does not think about the diverse spectrum of persons that are using or contributing to this project, then it's considered as ineffective. And also, if the project documentation does not scale along with the code base, not tracking the, um, the releases alongside with the documentation also counts as ineffective documentation. Now you can see that there are several things that a lot of projects do not look out for when creating or curating their um, project documentation, right? Now let's look at some of the checklists for having some of the checklists for um, a quality documentation. For several persons, the um, criteria for judging a project's a quality documentation vary, but based on the reports that um, have I have looked through from surveys and um, users that have contributed to open source projects I have um, worked with, these are the checklists that I know that a lot of persons would consider excellent projects. First off, if your project answers all of these questions, then your project is, if your project documentation answers all of these questions, then you can consider it a quality or effective documentation. First, it answers the question, why was this project created? Every single user would want to understand that question. Why was this project created in the first place? What problems does this project solve? Of course, your projects must have, you must have thought of an idea that, or a problem that exists in the society, and then you want to solve that, pro and that problem through your project. And so your documentation should probably, should, um, should constructively have answers to this question. What problem does this solve? How can I get started with this project? Yes, of course, we have different spectrum of persons coming in. If I want to use this project as a user, how do I get started? If I want to use this project as a contributor, how do I get started? If I am an engineer and I want to implement this code, this code base in my own code base, how do I get started? And if your project answers all of this, then it can be considered as quality documentation. And another question is, where has this project been used? And this is where we talk about the putting in references for people that have used it, testimonials for, from people that have used this project, companies or organizations that have used this project. So if I see that, yeah, um, this project was um, used by a software or a company that I regard, then I'll definitely have more confidence in your project and um, would definitely refer this project to someone else because I'm like, yeah, it's a reliable project. It's not an, a project that doesn't that lacks maintenance, management, and all of that. It's a project that a lot of persons are will be eager to use because the documentation is carefully written out, and so is the code base for this particular project. And then, um, who is currently using this project? You have to um, carefully write these details down in your documentation for it to be qualified or for it to be classified as quality documentation and where can I get help? A very, very important question as well. Where can I get help for this particular project? Um, if I need help on a project, on the project code base, where do I get help? Do I run to the community? Do I run to 
Should I look for your um, email directly? Should I look for you on social media? Where exactly do I go to when I need help for this project? And if this documentation lacks this, then well, it's not as quality as it should be. And also, how can I contribute to this project? We talked about this earlier and we say a detailed contributing guide is as important as the documentation itself because you want people to collaborate on your project, right? And in order to do that, you have to like carefully write down the steps for people that want to co collaborate on your particular project. And then finally, the project should have some live use cases. This could be in form of articles, this could be in form of um, um, video content, this could be in form of um, just lists of um, features that this project has and how it has been implemented, all of those. But then your project should have all of these um, this requirements or your project should answer all of these questions in order to, for it to be classified or qualified as um, an effective or quality documentation. And finally, talking of, now let's look at a quick quote that says, what is a great project without good or quality documentation? Well, I really don't know because documentation is everything for an open source project. Because if you look at open source projects, every single day you have people from different parts or different ends of the world coming to your project. And what exactly is a project that for you, it might be the future of tomorrow, but then your documentation says otherwise, or it doesn't, documentation does not put these details down there. Users will definitely not, you know, have to get into your brain to figure out the big plans you have for your project or the idea that you imagine for this project before you put it together. And so what exactly is a great project without quality documentation? And that is a take home question you should ask yourself whenever you're thinking of your project and you decide to let, to let your documentation come behind while improving on the code base. And um, that will be all for today. Thank you so much for listening and thank you for um, your time. I hope this, this, um, this section has helped in one way or the other, enlighten you on what exactly documentation is in open source software, why it is imperative, how to actually get about creating a quality documentation, the different strategies you can follow, and finally, how you should make sure your project documentation is top notch, just like your project code base. Thank you so much for your time. You can connect with me via Twitter, you can connect with me via GitHub and drop your questions if you have any for me. Thank you.